Hello, today I would like to show you a property of an element that we see often in Cheetah. Here you have a text element and uh, you see here tag configuration. They say, attention, the tag attribute should only be used by experienced users. With this tag, it is possible to manipulate the elements using the data tag selector. What does it mean? It's just you can define a name of a tag. So this element will have this name. But where and why? Why uh, it needs a name? For what? It is a programming language which is called JavaScript. And JavaScript is already used by Cheetah to create the pages. When you do, when you edit a page on Cheetah, at the end, it will produce a page with JavaScript. And you can put yourself a JavaScript in the page that will do things. So, of course, if you are not a developer, you don't know JavaScript, you can still use JavaScript. You can find tutorials on the uh, internet. But of course, as I said, it is for experienced users because it is not as easy as uh, using a Cheetah. But it's not difficult. Otherwise, not uh, so many people would will, will use JavaScript. It's a very simple programming language compared to other kind of uh, programming language. So when you select uh, an element, you go to tag configuration, you put a name. So I put my text. And I will show you how the page, this page looks actually at the moment. I have did nothing except put a name. So what happens when we look at it in a browser? This is a live version of the page. You cannot, I go back, eh? I go back to Cheetah. You cannot use the preview in order to see your JavaScript or the real page. A preview is just a, a very simple preview, but the live version of the page is this one. And here, what you can do in, in your browser, you right click on the element and you click on inspect. What you will see is uh, the, the engine behind the HTML code here. And you can, if you, you get familiar with it, you can see that uh, at some point here, we have a, a div and there is data tag equals my text. This has been added because I've put a name in this part in Cheetah. So it puts my name in the HTML code, which will allow us to use JavaScript to target this element. But if you look at the HTML code, how it's made, in fact, here we have, we are on a div, but inside the div, you have another div, and then you have a span. So all those terms are just HTML things that you can learn. But what is important to notice is that for the text element, you have two versions. Here you have a span, and then you have another span. And the difference between them, you can see in the class that the first span is for the desktop view, and the second one is for the mobile view. So if you want to change the text element, you have to do it two times. So first you target this div, and you go inside one div, a span and a h2 and then you can change the content of the text so you know when uh, you select the element you will select with the data tag my text then a div and then a span which has the class desktop element then the h2 and you change the content of the h2 and you do the same for the mobile so you target the data tag my text the div you get inside the div you get inside the span with the class mobile element and then inside this span if you if we um, click here inside this span we have also h2 and the content for the mobile view is inside this so now you have the theory you know it's a, it can look complicated but uh, once you understand uh, this then we have the javascript part how to target uh, the elements and how to change them so the mobile view and the desktop view, this is for uh, text elements. For other kind of uh, elements, you don't have two views. So to know that, you have to do, like I said, um, right click and inspect to inspect the code. 
so you can uh, uh, know what to target exactly. Because if you target only data tag my text and you try to change the content of this, you will change everything. Everything here will be deleted and replaced by what you put as a change, you know. So if you want to change just the content of the text, you want to keep everything the same. For instance, you see that I have rotated this text element. So if I want to, to keep everything and just change the content of the text, I need to target my text, a div, a span, h h2, and change it, and it will change for the desktop view. If I want to change for the mobile view, I have to do the same again and change the span. And voilà. Okay, so now I will show you how to do um, the JavaScript. So we go inside the, the page, this is this one, you go in settings, and here you have page script. You can add here the scripts you find necessary for your page. So I will um, copy and paste the whole script and I will explain to you. You will see, so that's a, a few lines. So if, if you want to see, uh, I will show you some lines. For instance, this is the way to target the element. This is a basic way. It's a document dot query selector and you put uh, data tag equals my text, then a div, then a span which has the class desktop element and inside this span the h2. And you do the same for the span mobile element h2. So now you have uh, the two handles to, to your text content in both views. Then here I, I put, um, I define another variable which is my today date. So I, I generate the, the date, the current date in English and I add a last day. I, I put a last day, the date. And I, what I want to do is that when I hover the mouse on the text, it shows me act now before it's too late. And when I remove the mouse, it goes back to last day and it puts the two days date. So, you know, you just uh, put some handles. So this one is the handles on the element. So it will be on the first div. Then this one is the handle on the, the H2 of this element in the desktop view. And the last one, the same, but for the mobile view. And then here, you can see that uh, to change the content, now I just have to do my text desktop dot inner HTML equals my today date. So it will write last day and the today date. Same for mobile, okay? And here I define two actions, two functions. This is for my text add event listener for mouse enter. So when the mouse enter, this element, I want to write um, act now before it's too late. Okay, so I, I put it in both desktop and mobile views. And I, another function is when the mouse leave, then I want to write back what I have before, that is last day and today's date. So I have those two functions, which are uh, event listener, so when the mouse enter and when the mouse leaves. But before that, I set the text as the today's date. And everything here is put, you can see here, is put as a, an event listener load. Why? Because the cheetah, the page in cheetah are made in JavaScript. So before you change anything on the page, you need to wait for the page to be finished, to, have, to be generated. So that's why the JavaScript that you put, you should put it on the load uh, event. That means that the page has finished loading and then you can change elements. If you don't do that, if you if you try to change immediately, what can happen is that you change the element, but Cheetah Hound engines will uh, change again because he, ha he has not finished to create the page. So you change something and Cheetah generate what he needs. And so the element will not look changed. It will change because you change it in JavaScript and immediately after, in less than one second, Cheetah will finish it and will put what he wants in this element. So in order to avoid those kind of problems, you just wait for the page to finish and then the event load will be fired. And this, you say, what happens once the load event has been fired. So at this moment, you can do what you want. You can change what you want. You will not have a problem with Cheetah because Cheetah has finished, finished its job. 
So you see, this you can learn it uh, when you learn the JavaScript. So how to uh, uh, do things after certain events. So here, add event listener for load. You can see that it's the same here. I do. Uh, I wait for the event mouse enter on on this element here on the mouse leave. So you can construct your program this way. And if you want to see what happens, so I show you how it was before. The page without any JavaScript, it's just the three dots that I put. But now I show you with the, the script. It shows last day, Tuesday, because it's today, huh? Tuesday, April 12th. Tomorrow it will be Wednesday, April 13th. And when you put the mouse over, it shows act now before it's too late. And you, when you go back, it shows again last day. So that's a, that was a very um, a complex way to show you how to use this tag configuration that you can find on all the elements that uh, we put on in Cheetah. And then the JavaScript here is just uh, one example, but you could have the text moving. Uh, you can have the text change color. Or if you do it uh, on an image, you can change the source of the image. So you can, if you do a JavaScript that maybe every 20 seconds, it change the URL of the image element. So the image will change. This is something you can maybe do in Cheetah, but maybe not. You know, in JavaScript, you have you have much more power uh, to to do what you want. In fact, I, I could change the video of the background. I could change it when the mouse goes on this text. There are many things to do in JavaScript. It, it's very interesting. But of course, it's um, something we have to learn. And you can find a lot of examples on the internet. And often it's just copy and paste and update to match your needs. You know, I, I, di I didn't invent all this. I just look at examples and try it. I see it works fine. You can uh, troubleshoot when you have a problem. You can ask uh, on uh, Builder all Facebook groups or or on JavaScript uh, Facebook groups. So, you know, you're not alone with JavaScript. You can learn it and it's very useful. It's not going to go away because it has been a long time that there has been a JavaScript. So it's, it's useful to use, to do things that you cannot do with the editor, be it Cheetah or something else, because you can add JavaScript everywhere where it's allowed to put a script. You can import external script from uh, other companies, which do things like uh, showing social share buttons. You know, there are many things you can do. So that's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comments. Bye-bye.